All right, live on YouTube. Live on Facebook. And one more. All right, and live on Instagram. Boom. All right. Hi, Zach. How's it going? Kevin, how are you? Welcome. Okay. BD Hunting just joined us. How's it going? Tyler, welcome. All right, guys, when you're tuning in, just uh, let us know where you're from. We're in Connecticut, live from the brand new Wild Edge shop. So welcome to our virtual event, day three. Three. Um, we'll be going over safety lines, tethers, your lines in line, ropes in general, knots, um, everything you want to know about using lines and being safe. So we're getting ready to get started. Um, before we jump in, I just want to let you guys know uh, on our website right now, wildageinc.com, we're running a sale up to 20% off some of our products. Um, and like our flagship products are on sale. So our step ladders on sale, uh, the perch is on sale, the battlement, the berserker. So take advantage of that in the off season. We're in stock. We're shipping daily. Uh, so don't let that go to waste. We don't I'm run sure sales very often. Yeah, I am making fun of it. Okay. Yeah, good. Good point that during the busy season. Yeah, right. So uh, a lot of times, obviously, uh, with the honey industry, our busy season ebbs and flows. Um, guys gear up to go get ready, get all their gear together. July, August are really busy. And that's when you see a lot of uh, smaller style hunting companies start to run out of stock. So don't wait. Uh, we're really going to stress today. Do a safety check of all your gear. Check your lines. Um, look for you know, look for snags, look for things and indications that they should be replaced and do it now in the off season when you can test and get used to your gear. Um, and don't wait until things are out of stock and demand is sky high. So, so basically buy now's the time to buy. I know a lot of people are interested in buying right now. They're waiting for new stuff to come out. Um, they're researching, but right now we're fully stocked on everything. And, uh, so now is definitely the time to buy. Um, a lot of our products will fluctuate going in and out of stock during the busy season. A lot of our manufacturers are small companies. Uh, all our metal, metal products come from Texas. So they're a pretty good size metal fabrica fabrication company. But uh, towards the end of the year, which begins in the fall, a lot of other companies they work with are rushing orders, trying to get the write-offs and building product for the, their on and off season as well. So... You know, there's a lot of fluctuation, so I would just advise if you're going to buy, you know, now's the time to research and buy your products now and uh, be prepared for the season. Don't start buying in July and August. We're doing our best to ramp up and be stocked with inventory. Not saying we're going to be out, but just right now is a better time to buy. Awesome. And then before we jump in again, we're today's day three. So if you just joined, welcome. Um, talking about ropes, safety lines safety, tethers, lines and lines, whatever you call them. We're talking about it uh, today. And don't forget, free Berserker giveaway. I don't know where he's running off to, but free giveaway. The Berserker saddle, brand new. We just launched it um, this year, 2021. So you can get your hands on one for free. All you have to do is head over to our Instagram page. Make sure you're following us. Uh, there was a recent post on there. Just tag your buddies in it. You'll be automatically entered to win. Uh, other ways you can gain entries would be to share this video, comment, be active, invite your buddies to come join us live. They can be entered as well. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. So those are just some some basic ways you can be entered. Um, and keep letting us know where you're from. It's interesting. We got De Des Moines, Iowa. We got some Connecticut, Virginia, uh, North Carolina. Awesome. France. Welcome. Someone from France. Oh man. Oh man. All right. And then as we get started, guys, put your questions in. I'll do my best to try to 
work through them and, and get you to answer them. Um, so did we post day one virtual trade show video? It's on our Facebook. Um, I'll make sure it's posted to YouTube as well. And I think believe it's also on our Instagram and IGTV. Um, John Voss wants to win a saddle. There you go. All right. So, yeah, keep the questions coming. I'll do my best to moderate and we'll get going. And we have a special, not so special guest. <laughs> Trevor, Outdoor Drive Podcast. Trevor's my boy. He's always been there with me. So he's here to help us down the street. Um, where do we start with? Hey, buddy. All right. So let me start from the beginning. I think your green lines, Trevor. What? Your green lines? That's the beginning. Okay. So when we started... When a lot of guys start us out hunting, we use these big uh, lines for lines and lines, tethers. So I just want to make everything clear. We get a lot of questions on uh, through our email and social media. What's the difference between a tether and a linesman line? A linesman line and a tether can be the same thing. So we call a linesman line a rope with a prusik on it. It could be a prusik or a distal hitch. It could be a mechanical ascender. We'll go through those later, but this is your basic lines and line. It has a figure eight loop on the end. Again, this is a big rope, 7 16 rope, and it has a quarter inch prusik on it. So the whole point is when it is attached to your saddle, there's a couple ways to attach to your saddle. You can either do a carabiner through each loop, that's why you put a loop on each end. Um, and attach it to your lines and loops, or you can girth hitch it through. So, back up. So, to attach to the carabiner, just like that, to girth hitch it. So, girth hitching means to bring the loop through and girth hitch it back through your lines and loop. So, say you're running a dump pouch with the saddle or any climbing harness. The advantage of a dump pouch is when you're done with this rope, you can put it back in the dump pouch, right? So when you get to the tree, you can take this, throw it around the tree, and with another carabiner or a carabiner, attach it to the prusik, to your lines and loop. Then to adjust it, two hands, pull the prusik up, and you're tightening against the tree. So both your hands are free um, to come back, you pull back. The disadvantage of this rope, so this rope is a lot less expensive than our eight millimeter rope, but it's tried and true. We've been using this for years. This is what I started on. A lot of guys still use it, but again, it is bulky, but it's a lot less expensive than your smaller tactical ropes. So just for perspective, this is your bigger rope, 7 16th rope, and then this is your 8 millimeter. So you can see the size difference. This can even go smaller. So this can go into the palm of your hand, and this also has a mechanical prusik on it, which is the Kong Duck mechanical ascender with the oval on carabiner. And so you can see the difference there. The other, so we also, we offer the, our lines and lines in seven foot, nine foot. We offer our sling lines, which is a little different in um, seven foot and 12 foot, seven foot, nine, nine foot and 12, 12. foot. Um, the only difference is our sling line has a bigger loop on the end, which is easier to girth hitch through your saddle or around the tree. And it has a Blake, Blake's hitch on it. Blake's hitch is a little bit easier to adjust than a Prusik because a Prusik might bind up. So I can show you that right here. So if you put a lot of tension on the Prusik, sometimes the actual rope will bind up on itself and it's hard to adjust under tension. So all you're going to do is loosen it up, take tension off it, reconfigure Prusik, and then it can slide easier. The Blake's hitch is a lot easier to adjust. Um, 
it doesn't really come out of form at all. So it always stays on form and it bites really tight. So there's your sling line with your Blake's hitch with a figure eight on the, on the end and a bite on the other end. So very simple. Again, bigger loop on the end, the girth that's around the tree or around your saddle. Um, but it's mainly for your tether. But again, all these lines can be used for both. This is your eight millimeter Sterling O-Plux. So this line, again, very small, simple. It's eight millimeters, has a six inch sewn eye on the end, eight and a half feet of rope. And the advantage, the biggest advantage of this, it's small, it sounds so stupid, but a smaller rope is very, it's a big advantage. It sounds stupid, but I don't run a lot of, I don't run dumb pouches. Lydia does, Trevor does, a lot of guys do, but I will stuff this in my pocket or on the way in with my backpack on and my waist belt cinched tight. I'll just shove it right inside my jacket like that. So my waist belt's holding in there. When I get to the tree, pull it out and this would get girth hitched. So without a knot, it's very easy to girth hitch it right to your saddle. So you can see how it's a lot more sleek. And then the advantage of this, is, again, this is the Kong Duck. We sell this as the Wild Edge line kit. It's the eight millimeter rope with the Kong Duck on it with the oval one carabiner. And the big advantage of the duck with this carabiner, it can work with any carabiner, but this carabiner is made for the duck. You can rotate it all the way around so that your gate so you clip in your carabiner and your gate is on the top. It's hard to get your bridge into that gate. So you just rotate the carabiner and open it up. So the jaw is open like this. So you can grab your bridge and clip it right in. So as a lines in line, it's very easy to use. Same thing as a tether. I would clip in and then again you can either at the end of your rope you can tie a bite I'll go over these knots at the end so a bite is basically just like a stopper knot so I'll just do a couple loops pull through I have a bite at the end or I could do a figure I like to do a figure eight so I do a figure eight so basically a stopper knot or a bite would just keep prevent the rope from slipping through the duck if anything ever happened but i like to make a figure eight at the end a loop you can do an overhand knot too and then clip it back into the carabiner so if anything fails here i'm still attached to the carabiner um and then to adjust i just pull in to come back from the tree you can either grab this loop or stick your thumb right in the jaw and send back from the tree. So you talk again, about correct versus incorrect use of the stuff. Yeah. Direction. I'll do that close up. So with the duck, see, so yeah, Lydia, you're the tree. So a lot, a lot of guys when they're climbing. They just want to grab the duck like this with their tail end and pull up. But the correct way to do it is with your loop through the carabiner. See the wheel on the duck right there? You're going to want to grab your tail end like this. Take all pressure off of your body, off of the tree, and pull up like this. So you don't want to wrench on the duck. That whole wheel is there for a reason. Slide it up. Bring it back. Take pressure off. Pull it back. So very simple, very easy to use. Um, and again, a lot of guys, the critiques, what? Nothing. I learned something. You did. Yeah. <laughs> See, a lot of guys too. It's the little shit. Um, in the instructions that come with the duck, they're there too. Oh, is that? You've read the directions. Yep. Men don't read instructions, yep. my friend. And a lot of guys will, a lot of guys will tape their carabiner 
and tape the inside of the dock because they say it's noisy. Well, again, my theory of slow is smooth, smooth is fast, keep it simple. I can climb this tree, climb any tree very slow and simply and not make a lot of noise. But, uh, you know, if you're running around like a rabbit, it'll be noisy, but... All right, that is the Wild Edge line kit. Again, I'll take this off. You have your Sterling Oplux eight millimeter rope. You have your Kong duck and your oval one carabiner. Awesome system, easy adjustable, easy, easily, easy to adjust. Little micro adjustment. So I, I love this as a lines and line because as you're climbing a tree, you'll notice yourself always making little tiny adjustments. Um, you know, as you so a lot of guys always feel like their lines and line has to be right here in at your waist, but you can sag it down, you can pull it up, especially guys with aiders. It's a very easy way to very quickly loosen up your lines and line, you know, sag it down for your aiders to get the next higher climb. So again, great system. The tried and true. This is one of my favorites. It is, we call it the Kiss Line Kit. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, it has a eight millimeter rope, same, same exact rope that I just talked about, eight millimeter with a six inch uh, Sonai with a six millimeter TVAC Prusik on it. And I'll show you, I'll show you how that works real quick. Again, you can girth hitch it through the saddle or you can use a carabiner, doesn't matter. If, you, if you're running a dump pouch, girth hitching is the way to go because you can then grab your rope and throw it back in the dump pouch. Uh, if you're not running a dump pouch, um, I said it wrong. Carabiner, no, you're right. Yeah, if, if you're not running a dump pouch, use a carabiner so you can unhook it real quick. But uh, again, this goes around the tree, Keep my tree. And then I would then yeah. attach this carabiner right here, back to the lines and loop. And here is, we call this the poor man's ascender. It's a plastic D-ring D with 550 cord on it. So what I talked about before with the big green line, you needed two hands to adjust your Prusik. You needed to grab the Prusik and grab the tail of the rope and pull up um to shorten your rope to lengthen it you could just pull down with this it gives you one hand adjustment just like the duck so you can pull up just like this and shorten it same thing and again i would either put a bite on the end or i would do a figure eight uh when i'm running a lines in line i would do a bite on the end so a bite you would just take the rope like this wrap it twice, and then go through the X. And then you're making a bite. It's like the overhand knot, but doubled. Um, if I was running this as my tether or any tether, figure eight, you kind of have to find your correct length, flip it over. Again, this is all on YouTube. I don't have to go through this like crazy, but that's your figure eight. And I'll clip it back into my carabiner. How about dressing? Yep. The biggest thing. So Lydia brought up a good point with dressing your knots. Um, so this is a correct figure eight. You see how every loop, every rope is next to each other. They're not overlapping. So if I wanted to, if I did this figure eight wrong, it would look like this. See how this rope, the loops are overlapping on top of each other? That's incorrect. So you wanna undress the knot. You always wanna make sure that those ropes are parallel to each other going through the knot. Um, same thing with the Prusik. So 
when you're starting your Prusik, so say you just get this kiss line kit, you just get this rope with the Prusik on it, and it's not really working, right? You want to dress the knot. So you want to roll each loop down to the knot and then pull it tight. And that's dressing the knot. You always want your ropes to be tight to the next rope. Again, if they're loose and sloppy, they're going to slide. But you want to dress the knot. So I'm just rolling each roll down and then giving it a good bite. And this rope, the kiss line kit, again, everything works in double, tether, lines and line, whatever you want to use. So going up to the tree, I'll do the same thing. I already have it set up here. So again, I'll drip pitch it through the splice die. I'll attach it to my bridge. And then I would tie a figure eight on the end of the rope and hook it back into my carabiner. Again, a double safety. A lot of guys will put a bite on the end of the rope and then kind of wrap it around their shit up here, but that's not doing anything. If you make an actual figure eight, even if it's an overhand knot, it's going to work. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just make a, make a loop, put a good knot in the end, clip back into your carabiner, screw it down. And not only is this an extra safety, but it's also as simple as it sounds, it's a good arm hold. Um, I find myself a lot of times sitting like this, like this. So, and again, it's another another good loop. So when you want to adjust, you pull up, relax back down. If you want to come down again, take tension off the rope, slide back down. Incredible. Incredible. Trev, what do you got? Someone said, Trev, put the truly down and help Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> he is drinking some girly drinks. <laughs> All right. Oh, there was Any a question, question on there. What what size is the small? Yes. What size is the small? Let me, let me get the actual question. I'm sorry. Probably asking what waist size. Yeah, waist size. So, so the be question a... is exactly, David said, what's the waist size for a small berserker? Um, it'd be anywhere from, like they, we always said 28 to 32, yeah, 32, but it would go smaller than 28. I don't even know if they make those pant sizes. It'd be like a kid size, but the, the small will fit a kid. So if you're below, teenager. yeah, teenager. But, um, Men's size pants, they start at like what, 28, right? Might be a 26. 26. They'll go, it'll go, it'll go a lot smaller than a 28. Never worn one in my life, so I don't know. <laughs> um, but again, like we said, uh, it all depends on the build of your body. So I'm a 32 inch waist. I have skinny legs. I have a small torso, small waist. But I have like my buddy Paul, who's a 32 inch waist. He's like 6'2, but his legs were a little beefy or a small but he's also a 30 year old man um so it would definitely go smaller than 28. oh we have another question when you're tethered do you prefer the duck or the kiss i go back and forth i mean they both work they both work great um the kiss line kit is quieter but at the same time the duck is quiet if you make it quiet uh you're banging around it's gonna be loud but i you know i i do the one line climbing method. Um, I said this a couple nights before where I use my lines in line, whether it's the duck or the kiss line kit. And when I get to my climbing height, I will snap my bridge into a step, unhook my lines in line, hook my tether in and hook it back to my bridge, then unhook my lines in line. So I'm always connected to the tree. Uh, but say you're using sticks, you can't really do that. So I always suggest beginner saddle hunters definitely use two lines, have your lines in line, grip hitch to one side with a dump pouch, then have your tether in the dump pouch from the bottom. 
So we can go to the lines in line. Keep your lines in line on, hook your tether in, and then uh, get it adjusted. But especially as a safety. Yeah. And another safety that you use a lot is the, the actual step itself. Yep. So when you do get up and you're up there and you snap into the step and then you put on your, your lines, you're tethered, and then that's another way to do it also. Any other questions? Um, yes. So we have like that biner. Is that a normal duck on the small diameter rope? In the frame, what? is it a normal duck on a small diameter? So I guess the diameter of the duck. Yeah, so the, the duck is it's eight to thirteen millimeter rope. Um, so like something like your uh, rope in one is ten to thirteen millimeter. So the duck goes down to eight millimeter rope. So that's what it's it's made for this rope. And again, the oval one carabiner. You can use another carabiner, but like I said. You put it through there. If you cannot rotate it, your jaw is going to be open to the top. So you have to take your rope, your bridge, and get it in there and back down. So, you know, in the dark, that might be a little difficult. I always love to have, when I'm hanging like this, open the jaw from the bottom. So I know in the dark, I can just grab my rope, my bridge, slip it right in, and it's connected. And another safety thing that I do is... As I'm climbing, when I go from my lines in line or my anchor point to my tether, I'm gonna double, triple, quadruple check everything. So, uh, especially since I had kids, um, I'm gonna put my hook my tether in. I'm gonna start hanging my gear up. My lines in line is still attached, or I'm attached to a step. Tether's hooked in, and then I'm gonna start going through everything. Okay, with or without a headlamp on. Usually just click the headlamp on real quick and go, okay, tether, good, attached to the bridge, everything's good. Like look at all your security points of what's hanging you. So your lifeline of your saddle is going to be your bridge, right? So I will sit there and go, okay, carabiner hooked in, whether it's a twist lock or screw gate, screw gate, twist it down, twist lock, it's good, duck's good, or the kiss line kit, good. Run the tree, good. Like I will double check and triple check everything before I release my weight into the saddle. And then I'll do it slowly. And that's the advantage of having a step as well. I'll have a step on the side of the tree, have my hand on it as I sit back. You know, when you're 20, 25 feet up in the air, that's kind of the scariest part, especially in the dark. You're gonna sit back, and, okay, okay. So you don't just hook your shit up and then sit back because you could accidentally hook on some line to another loop or, you know, Shit can go wrong, so I always double, triple check everything and make sure that everything is kosher and good. All right, have you noticed any difference in comfort for women with 32 inch waist in men's pants? Any recommendations? Looking forward to ordering in the future from Lisa. I'm gonna pay you answer. I guess that'd be me. You flip. Yep. Trev? Thank you. Hey, Lisa, I'm Lydia from Wild Edge. I've been hunting out of the Berserker for the past year. And then the year before that, I was um, testing some of our uh, other saddle demos. Um, I am also probably about a 30, 30, 32 inch waist in men's pants, um, but I wear a size medium saddle for the Berserker. And so what we realized is um, we have measurements on the website where you can measure around around your waist and then also around like the thickest part of your body, which would be your butt to your hips. Um, so the butt to hip is the important part because you want the lines and loops to hit you just before the boniest part of your hip. So if your lines and loops are hitting you here, and I know the lines and loops aren't an indication of the fit of the saddle, but it is with the berserker because it's a fixed distance. And what we realize is if the lines and loops hit just before the bony part of your hip, that's going to be the most comfortable saddle size for you. So we have those dimensions on the website on the Berserker like shop page. Yeah, so like Drew has no butt at all, literally zero butt, and might he's a 32 weird. inch might waist. Be weird, but and obviously, I'm a woman, butt. so I had more. Really? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> like I have back. I have no butt, right? We have to turn this. You have a butt. Turn that way. 
You need side profile. Side profile. Do you know anything like about absolutely side profile? Absolutely zero butt. It's just straight down. Right. So that's uh, where, like yeah. you're saying, I'm the small. Right. So he's a small. I wear a medium. I, I'm like on the. I could wear a small, but it's not quite as comfortable. Um, so we have those dimensions on our site. We even have a women's column under the sizing. Um, it's pretty close to what you can expect if you measure yourself. So take a measure, tape measure, go around the, your butt um, just before your bony part of your hips. Uh, and that'll be the measurement from the lines, one lines of loop to another on our saddle. I was size one thinking. What? I was, I thought I was a medium. Oh yeah, Drew thought he was a medium. Like it's more comfortable in the small. I mm -hmm. thought I would fall under the small, but I ended up being more comfortable in the medium. So if you guys order, you have any trouble at all, just reach out. Um, and you have the first like first couple of days uh, when you get the saddle, we'll exchange and get you the right size. So Kevin asked, what's the rating of the eight millimeter rope compared to the seven sixteenths rope? Uh, the eight millimeter rope is forty six hundred pounds, breaking strength. Awesome. And the T Vex forty seven hundred pounds. And Aaron said, Drew, do some squats. Yeah. <laughs> I gave that up before I had kids. Or once That's I had sad. kids, I stopped working you out. This one? No, you're on that one now. I don't even know if it's pointing the right direction. No, you're not. You're pointing at nobody. That's fine, though. Um, guys, so while we're in sort of an intermission, um, just a Any reminder. Questions? Yeah, push your put your questions in the chat. We're monitoring YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, so we don't get to it right away. Just send it again. Um, also, we are running a sale on um, the step ladder, the purge, the bottom, and the berserker. Um, all of our key products are on sale. You'll see our lines are on sale as well. Um, our eight millimeter tacticals on sale are um, basically like the majority of our products. So take advantage of that during the off season. Get your setup looking primo and ready for scouting season. Um, what else is that we are giving away a Berserker saddle? Um, we'll probably pick a winner this weekend. So head over to Instagram, follow, find our post about the giveaway, tag your buddies in it. Other ways, everybody who's here right now, you guys are being entered, um, participating. Just comment, make sure you comment. That way you're entered and um, subscribe to YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Real simple. So you guys boost this stuff, help other people learn about saddle hunting, and earn the opportunity to win a free saddle yourself. Got a couple of questions. Cool. Um, Aaron said from Facebook, how easily does the poor man's ascender break the bite of on the bridge after putting full weight on it? Um, that's a good point. You should just Let do it grab real a, time for your saddle. One minute. <laughs> you have to have to like lean in to look at the questions on this one. <laughs> yes. What? Only if the world could see what you're doing. I just want to see. We had a couple of questions. I right, got a good bit of questions. You're watching those, right? All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I can do it right here. So with. We'll put your full tension on it. I will. So when you put full tension on a Prusik, your top rope the top twist right here is usually going to bind and twist over. So that's where I was talking about dressing the knot. So you try to adjust that. It's going to be super hard. You can do it, take your weight off and adjust it, but you're going to look at that and roll that twist back. So the Prusik is, is as if it was just tied. And then it'll be a lot easier to adjust. So again, the Prusik will, as you put pressure on it, your top loop will twist back and look like that. So what you're gonna do, take pressure off, twist it back to its normal form, and then your adjustability with the poor man's center will be a lot easier. But again, you can adjust it like that. It's just gonna be a lot harder. So just 
take time to understand the knots, how they work under pressure, under load, how to tie them. Um, they're very simple. You can go on YouTube and just research how to tie, you know, a Prusik with a double fisherman's knot in it. So say you ever took this apart, just go online and figure out how to put it back together. It's pretty simple. One, do you want another question from Instagram? Yeah, keep it coming. Uh, if if I have an ascender for a larger tether, would it still work with the eight millimeter? I had what? An ascend, ascend, uh, mechanical ascender? Like a mechanical ascender. Uh, so again, the duck is the only mechanical, one of the only mechanical extenders. I'm pretty sure there's rope in two. the other one. Uh, the rope in two goes down to eight millimeter. I believe so. So the rope in one does not go down to eight millimeter. The Ropeman 2, Lydia says, does. I'm not positive on that, but the Kong Duck does go down to 8 millimeter. So you want to check the specs on it and see which, what size it goes down to. Um, they have said that the Ropeman 1 will work on 8 millimeter, but it's not recommended. So when your life's on the line, I would not recommend something that's not recommended. Um, ever consider repelling down or offering repelling gear? No. Um, for new for new saddle hunter, would you recommend kiss line or duct? It's all personal preference. Again, the kiss line is as simple as it gets. The Kong duck is very the Kong duck with the oval and carabiner is very easy to adjust. Um, I I go back and forth between, between using both of them, but I found myself this season using more of the kiss line kit. Um, but so put it this way, when I'm going mobile and I'm using one rope, I'd bring the kiss line kit when I'm going in to put presets up, um, and putting 12 to 16 steps up in a tree all summer long, I do at least 12 to 20 sets in the summertime of presets. I would 100% bring the Kong duck with the open one carabiner because I'm constantly using, I'm using it as a lines of line. So I'm constantly adjusting it. And when I'm constantly adjusting it, I would use this. So say you're a saddle hunter and you're constantly adjusting your tether length, go with the calm duck and the open one carabiner with the even way rope. If you're like me and you're sitting in this, when I'm sitting in my saddle, I rarely ever adjust my tether length. I'm, the only adjustment I'm really making is the adjustment on my bridge loops. So again, presets, putting up tree stands, Putting up uh, presets, I'd go with this. Um, but again, it's all personal preference. My favorite combination too that I found, and it's like 100% personal preference, like Drew said. But my favorite com combination is to use the Kong duck for my lines and line, and then the Kiss system for my tether. Because, like Drew said, I find myself adjusting more so on my lines and line as the tree changes as you go up and around things. Um, but when I'm set in my saddle, I usually don't make a lot of changes. So that would be too. the Kiss. So we, we can show that. So say I was climbing. This is my lines in line. Again, I would girth hitch it through here. But you can also hook your loop to a carabiner. But girth hitching is a little bit simpler. So you get to the tree. You be attached. So say I'm climbing, I want to put my next step right here, but then you know as you get higher up the tree, the tree gets smaller. So or you're going around branches, whatever. I want to have this double back in. You're always making adjustments, so it's this simple to make an adjustment. So say I want to get far away from the tree, or I want to get closer. I'm just pulling it up. So little micro adjustments are very easy with the Kong duck, um, especially when you're setting a platform. So say I'm putting a step right here and step. So I put my first step right here, put the perch in it, put my next step here. Then I want to swing around the tree. I can super easily just adjust it, swing around the tree and snap the next step in. So again, personal preference, they both adjust, but the Kong duck is little micro adjustments, a lot easier to adjust everything. 
All right. Another question we got was uh, Drew yesterday said he hates rubber boots, so we need him to tell us what his recommendations are for boots. Uh, so I I ran uh, for years. I ran uh, the Mendel's Cabela's Outfitter Mendel's 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 whatever they are um, from Cabela's. I wore those for years. They're starting to wear out now. So before I went to Idaho, I bought uh, Crispy's Crispy boots, and they're phenomenal. They're amazing. Um, very easy. You can you can't try them on in any store, but you can order them online. Pretty sure they come from Europe, but crispy boots are top of the line. So I would, I definitely recommend them. And I just, every day I wear steel toe boots, logger boots. Um, so it's, I just, I like my ankles confined and secure. I like my toes protected. Um, just work in blue collar work fields. I just always like my toes um, protected, but in my ankle support is the biggest thing. So rubber boots, I just can't do it in the saddle. It just then you have Taylor. You that, that's you Taylor wears yeah. fishing yeah, boots. Yeah, yeah, a lot of guys, a lot of guys run them, but that's just <laughs> yeah, my personal too, preference. Right? Extra I just in the tree. Yeah, until I step on a broad Yeah, I just can't do it. I just oh. I need ankle support. So that's just me. But Taylor wore extra tufts hiking up a mountain with yeah, ice so and snow. Yeah, yeah. Oh Lydia's boyfriend wears what is it? Extra tufts. Yeah, yeah. fishing Russian boots. boots. Rubber fishing boots. Trevor wears Triffin. Fishing boots and Crocs and <laughs> weird shit. I wore Vans one time because I forgot. My yeah, no, I, I can't do that. But I've, I've been, it's again, it's all personal preference. I just like ankle support. And Regards to wear and tear on your robes, do you have a timeline on when to retire them that came in from Ryan Mott? When they look like they should be retired. Is there like a certain point, like if when they're like when? Because obviously, I mean, I know, but the coating on the outside is one thing, but when you start getting into the yeah, so the, on the, inside, the biggest thing you're all, you're gonna want to pay attention to. Take this off. We have no land. Because if it's just a little warm, then it's just the outside coating on it. Yeah. So you're gonna want the biggest thing about this rope is it's gonna last you years and years and years. It's not gonna wear out. Um. So, but again, pay attention to the rope. Every rope you use, whether it's your saddle, webbing rope, um, eight millimeter rope, whatever rope is on your saddle or your saddle itself, the webbing, everything. Pay attention to everything. Fraying. Uh, abrasion, anything. Just pay attention to everything. You should always inspect your ship. But with the eight millimeter rope and the TVAC line, just pay attention. So right here, <clears throat> it's a sewn six inch eye. So a sewn eye is supposed to be stronger than a spliced eye. So this rope cannot be spliced. The eight millimeter rope plugs. So that's why it's sewn. It also has a plastic coating on it. So say I've noticed after you know a year or two. This plastic coating protector might slide off or get loose. If it does, just take some electrical tape and tape that plastic back on. But you want to also inspect and make sure those that sewn that sewn eye right there, all the stitching is good. So as you know, if it's if the plastic coating is coming off or you know sliding, just electrical tape it. But every once in a while take that tape off and inspect your stitches that's the biggest thing um same thing with a t-vac how about storing it too Drew? yeah so same thing with the t-vac it has your stitches right there so an eye just inspect it keep close keep a close eye on it i've never seen a t-vac plastic come off but I've seen some eight millimeter plastics that will slide off and I've seen it. So I would just electrical tape it, but every couple months, take it off, inspect the stitch. Cause that's your lifeline. But, um, the rope, yeah, just look, just like the step ladder rope. If you look in the rope and it looks sketchy, it looks like it's frayed. Well, it's time to replace it, but I've never seen eight millimeter rope get frayed or look like shit. Yeah. Do you have a rough guess on the weight difference going from 11 millimeter rope to an eight millimeter rope for both lines? And how it's no, it's ounces. Okay. That matters sometimes. But I mean, I just get frustrated with that question because it's, you know, you're not walking that Appalachian Trail. You're not hunting elk in Montana. You're not walking 10, 15 miles a day. So the weight difference, I could weigh them. I've just never been a big guy in weight. You obviously are. Yeah. Lydia hiked the Appalachian Trail, so she's a weight Nazi. So maybe you can answer the weight thing. So when I'm 
I don't know off the top of my well, head. Well, I'm going it's in. It's heavier. like, you know, a mile in is a long, long way. That's rare. Um, a mile long kayak is not rare. But that's a whole difference between walking. Um, my biggest thing is I don't care about weight. I care about compact because 90% of the time I'm ducking through brush. I'm going through briars. I'm going through swamps. I'm going through nasty, nasty shit. So weight isn't a big deal. It's bulk. So having a compact system is my biggest thing. Um, this I've never favorite. weighed the 8 millimeter rope compared to the big 11, 13 millimeter rope. I don't know. It is, it's a couple ounces, um, but to Drew's point, it's, this is much bulkier. I think a lot of your weight savings is going to come in your carabiner more so. Um, the rope itself, you're definitely, this is definitely lighter. It's, it's significantly lighter. Um, I don't have a scale. I mean, I don't know off the top of my head, but if you are counting ounces, you're going to want the eight millimeter over uh, the bigger line. Yes. You can look at your carabiner. Some carabiners are much heavier than others. So our Argon S carabiner is aluminum and it's super light. Um, that's just one of the things that you can help you drop some weight really quickly. Uh, like Drew said, I'm a gram counter because I hike a lot and um, I like to have super compact, really light systems. Same with hunting, but um, I'm not I'm not hiking miles and miles into the woods. I'm not going to lie about that. Some of you are, so if that's important to you, you're definitely going to want your lighter weight ropes. Um, I want to check some of the comments on YouTube. Like I said before, it's it's not, to me, it's not the weight, it's the compact the ability to be have a system that's compact so i could probably never hunt a lot of the spots that i hunt along the river if i had a climbing tree stand on my back or climbing sticks on my back um, so it's all about being compact especially loading a kayak um, or ducking under brush and all that all the crazy stuff so having a rope that's this big is minimal yeah. Um, so, so a weight to rope to rope really doesn't mean anything, but. Yeah, so we have, um, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I got one. Someone asked, um, Rob asked, do you use a Grigri Ascender? Uh, so that's like a climbing. A what? A Grigri is um, like, they're used as a belay device in climbing. You can also use them as ascenders. Um, it would work. It's not something that we use. We stick with the Kong because it works so well with our ropes. I believe a Grigri can go down to eight millimeter as well. Basically everything that's developing off of the saddle hunting community, like the saddle hunting community is like light years behind the arborist community. So and we're all climbing. in rock climbing. So we're all feeding off of the arborist and rock climbing community. So like we're, it seems like saddle hunting is light years behind it because it's so new. You know, you as hunters, we don't go, I'm going to be a hunter and a rock climber. You know, we're so saddle hunting. Basically, you're a hunter and you have to learn our wrist rock climbing techniques. So that's what we're trying to teach. It's there's a lot of ways to climb a tree. Um, there's SRT, DRT, there's one sticking, there's sticks, there's climbers, there's, you know, there's so many ways to climb a tree. We're just trying to show, basically, in my mind, I always like, I always preach kiss, keep it simple, stupid, military term. So that's kind of the way I always want to pawn things. And Lydia does the same thing with the way she climbed or hiked the Appalachian Trail. Um, I've gotten Trevor more online with Keep It Simple Stupid. Um, so why don't you jump in and kind of explain how you used to hunt, like when you hunt in spray with your climbers, you should walk in basically naked. Oh, yeah. Sweating just, your balls off. And just then to get turn into saddle hunting where you could. Absolutely. So, Trevor, so Trevor, when I first met him, um, we started a podcast uh, with another, we're not going to mention his name, he's a dick. Uh, Trevor would talk about hunting, uh, it's called Sprague, so a part of, it's a giant state forest in Connecticut. And he would talk to me about how he would walk into the woods in long johns, basically a t-shirt, have all his clothes on his back with a climber, with his bow, with his camera equipment and beat his balls and he'd hop, he'd walk, you know, might not have miles. been, it could have been miles, but it was all, but it was all, you know, out oh, in New man. England, it was. when you say a mile, it could be up this way, down yeah. this way. So I, I'll let him explain how, when he was talking to me about it before he started saddle hunting, I'm like, what the fuck? No, I mean like when, with the packability, I mean, using a climber, and and taking everything in i mean it's not easy at all and then going to something like saddle hunting 
and having something so light and so easy and so versatile to be able to not only pick pick the spot, but you're able to pick the tree at that point and be able to get in places that you normally weren't able to get into. Um, I guess, you know, once you go to that and not no, having – Oh, I used to hunt with a climber. I mean, it was absolutely miserable. It was the worst thing ever. You have a um, summit tree climber on my back and hike forever with a backpack and all the climbing gear and bow and everything else and just completely sweat. And then to go down to something that you're literally, I mean, this is your tree stand. I mean, you literally, that's it. I mean, this is all you carry. So, I mean, this is ounces. And you don't have to... You, you're not sweating your ass off. You can literally go in. Wear it in. Nor yeah, you wear this in. I mean, Lydia wears it in the car on the ride there. I mean, you when when you when you go down the simplicity of just having this and not. I mean, this is literally all you have to bring with you, and then your steps or your sticks or whatever else that you're going to use. So it definitely makes things a lot easier, a lot simpler. Yeah, Did you ask the one about the Genesis 3D? No, that was the next one. Okay. On the list. Is there a benefit to the calling over something like the Genesis 3D figure eighter? It's like a plastic figure eight. Figure eight. Figure. That would be uh like the Portman Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that would just be a that would be an aid in loosening or basically an aid in tightening your rope, whether you're using a distal hitch or a Prusik or whatever you're using. Do you ever use the eight millimeter as a bow or a backpack hoist? You don't hoist anything. No. It's too short. Yeah, you'd have to have a million miles of line. Yeah, so what I do, I'll go down here, but I talked about this, I think, last night. Um, when I, like I said, everything is situational. Everyone wants to know exactly how you do something, when you do it, exactly what you do and how you do everything. In every situation, every situation is different. Uh, when I'm hunting the river bottom along the Connecticut River, I'm hunting out of a kayak, so everything's different. Every big tree that I use to climb is an ash. They're all dead. Um, so I will be very cautious in what <laughs> tree I climb, but I will still climb climb them. But 90% of the trees I'm climbing are, you know, this big around. Um, so I'm only climbing 8 to 10 feet at the max. I can't climb any higher because the tree will fall over. Um, so I'm just trying to get over the underbrush or the frag muddy. Uh, so then that transfers into a different setup to when I'm going on a hardwood spot on top of a ridge of an oak, an oak ridge. That means I would need to get higher. So I'm going to bring more steps, a different system. Um, my system is different every time, but say I'm climbing a tree with a lot of branches. I'm going to have my bow on my back. If I'm climbing a tree that's straight up, my bow is going to be hanging off my saddle, off the gear loop with a carabiner. That's taped on the cam of the bow or the bow sling, the wrist sling on my bow. Um, so it's like every time I leave my shop and I'm getting geared up to go hunting, whether it's morning or night, I'm thinking about where I'm going. So I may have three areas that I think I'm going to go. So I'll have my gear ready for those different areas and then I'll consume my shit and make sure that I have the right setup for where I'm going. Or if I'm going into an unknown area, like a big state forest that's around here, big state forest is 1,200 acres, 1,500 acres. So when I'm going to like something like Babcock State Forest, that's what, 12, 1,500 acres? I'm going in blind. I have no fucking clue where I'm going. So I'm not going to bring five steps. I'm going to bring eight or ten uh, because I may get to a straight tree in an oak flat. So like when I go pheasant hunting with my dog bullet, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going through and I'm scouting, but pheasant hunting at the same time. And I like, I make marks on onyx and I go back, but I may not know if I'm going to climb a tree, a maple tree that has limbs all over a beech tree, or if I'm going to climb an oak that's straight up, an oak that's straight up, I'm going to use more steps so I can get higher. So, but it also all depends on this blab one, I know, but it all depends on your shooting ability. So when you're mobile hunting, you're not trimming shooting lanes. So you're going to climb the tree Good luck getting 25, 30, 30 feet and having shooting lanes. You know, in New England around here, that's not going to happen. You won't be able to shoot unless it's directly down. So you're going to want to be, I'll, I'll find myself going 12, 15 feet. But say I bring six, eight steps, I may get to a point where I have to get higher to a crotch of a tree where I get good cover. I'll do the half pull-up system like I demonstrated last night. But 
That was a fucking rant, huh? Yeah, relax, would you? Sorry. I get excited. Right. Some manufacturers offer the... Swabish? The Swabish hitch in their linemen and tether setups. Have you ever used the that hitch? And if so, what are your thoughts on type of friction hitch? What? The instead of the, hitch. it's like it, yeah. Instead of a prosthetic, it's just a different. Type yeah, it's of, a different type of hitch. It's like it, this is a friction knot. Friction knot. You use the prusik. That is your thing, or the yeah. I like I said, keep the, it simple, the stupid. Prusik, distal, distal, distal hitch, Blake's hitch. There's a lot of very simple, basic knots that work. I've step, I've kept with what works. Um, there are a lot of fancy knots out there in the climbing world, arborist world. So feel free to explore, but our products, we just stick to what works and what's up. What pack are you running to pack in the steps and platform? So I, I hate to advertise for companies that I don't endorse or work for or get paid by, but this is a good pack. <laughs> um, I grew up using just uh, army surplus packs or my old army packs. So you can go to an army surplus store and get a pack or on Amazon and like get a, a pack. pack. No, just a basic military pack, like a tactical pack for, you know, 20, 30 bucks. But this is an expensive pack, uh, 250, whatever it is. It, it's expensive, but I've used this for years and I love it. Um, the reason I love it is because I have all these straps in the front. I love packs with straps, straps in the front, straps in the bottom, like packs with straps are the only packs I like. Um, pockets. I love fucking pockets, especially pockets, <laughs> especially pockets on the on on your waist belt. Yep. I just love them. Um, That's it. So as I'm walking in, you know, all situational. Talked about this again last night. Um, late season. I'm walking in. Most of the time, the only reason I'll carry a pack, um, unless I'm self filming, is to put my clothes in it. So I'll have my outer layer jacket in there. Sometimes I'll carry my bibs in in there. Um, if I'm carrying my bibs in, my saddle will also be in there. Um, unless the big advantage of like something like Sika bibs or the broadside bibs, any bibs, on the way in, if I'm wearing bibs on the way in, I keep my saddle on and you unzip your leg zippers. So you have full air flowing through your legs. So you're not sweating. So you get to the tree. Once you get set up, you zip them up. But anyway, I would keep my... My outer layers in the pack, my water bottle, my range finder. So everything goes in the same place. The place for everything and everything has its place. Range finder will go right here. Bow hanger will be either in my pocket if I have cargo pockets or be right here. My release in the dark would be in my pack in the same pocket. In the daylight, my bow would be in my hand. My release would be in my hand You're not in case I jump something. Um, so if I have clothes in the backpack, I would have my steps in these straps and I have my platform on top of the, on top of the steps. Get to the tree, put the pack down, step ladder bag goes over my shoulder. If it's a perch platform, it goes in this waist belt, basically, which is your gun holder. In between here, cinch it tight. My platform's right there, climb the tree, steps, platform gets hooked in, jump on top of the platform, hook my tether in, backpack comes off, Always have a carabiner right here. Hook it to the step. Bow hanger goes on. Bow comes off. Either my saddle or my back. Boom. Nice. Leah's so me hurry up. Well, yeah, you talked about that yesterday. Um, Larry wants to know if the waist strap on the wild edge saddle will loosen up after walking around for a while. No, it's so when I when I walk in, I will I'll tighten my my waist strap, tighten my leg straps, my bridge. So you can see right here, I have it tucked back in. I'll tighten my bridge all the way so everything's secure. Like nothing's flapping around. It's not like a diaper. I'll take this rope, either stuff it in a cargo pocket in my side pocket, or I'll wrap it around and tuck it back through my bridge loop. So everything's secure. Get to the tree, undo it. Once I get to climbing height, boom, there's your bridge. I put a figure eight on the end of mine and I love it. Keeps it out of the way. Alrighty, you kids are sure spending a lot of time together for Matt Scranton. From Matt Scranton, you kids are sure spending a lot of time together. Yeah, Matt, when are you coming by, bud? <laughs> you have one over here. Oh, get it. Oh yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, do you have a compact bow hoist recommendation? Compact bow hoist recommendation. I just use a, a piece of um, 550 cord. Yeah, 550 paracord. I just make them put a little tiny loop on the bottom of them, and yeah. that's it. You can go to your hardware store, get, get 550 cord, or order on, on Amazon. I just have a loop on the bottom. Up. Yep. Goes through the can, goes through the can, down onto my stabilizer. You just pull it up like that. No metal, no nothing. You just yep. real quiet. Oh, here's a good one. Is there a difference between rope wear using the cone duck versus the prosthetic? No. You haven't noticed anything? Very little. Very little. Very little. With the with the calm duck, you'll see a little bit, but that's just that outer coating of the eight millimeter rope. You'll just see it starts to, so the, to wear it down a little bit, but the it's not. The duck is a rope grab where the Prusik, the more you slide it, it's going to burn the rope. But the advantage of the tactical eight millimeter rope is it's uh, it's cut resistant, abrasion resistant. So it's it's made for what we're what we're using it for. Any other rope might be different. All right. And what sticks do you recommend from Rob? Uh, if you're looking into sticks, I would check out out on land manufacturing, the Shikar sticks. Uh, I got some out in the shop, but uh, Trevor uses them. He right. loves them. They're, they're awesome. So any sticks you're looking into, check out out on land manufacturing. Shikar. They're called the Shikar sticks. They have the FX series and then the non-FX series. And he even came out with a couple new ones with the platform attached to the top of the stick. One sticking. Awesome. Uh, why don't you? We're at five o'clock now. So, any last last tips? Yeah. So, uh, any questions you guys have, feel free to reach out to us on social media um, or through our customer service email. And uh, don't forget, we have our, our sale running for a virtual trade show this week. So, like we said in the beginning, now's the time to buy our to buy products. Um, we are fully stocked. It's the off season. Um, so don't wait till June, July, August to start buying your saddle hunting gear. I would start researching now and buy what you need now. And uh, don't forget to tune in tomorrow night for our next live event. Awesome. All righty. Trev, you anything to say? Nope, I'm good. Nope. Outdoor drive? Just practice now. Now better time to practice now than, than later. You want to do it now so get your stuff now and start practicing because you definitely need to practice so like i said go to you know get your saddle hunting gear now before the season go to every tree in your backyard go to state park climb every tree get your gear figured out if you have any questions reach out to us start at ground height yeah start at ground height <laughs> <laughs> figure, <laughs> figure your shit out but uh just do what works best for you that's our our biggest thing just do what works for you Figure out what works for you. Figure out what pack you want, how to pack it, how to climb. Build your system. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Check back tomorrow. See y'all. Mm -hmm. Turn off this fucking thing. I feel like.